Welcome back to the Museum Roadshow. I'm Amy Deggers from the director here at the Becker County Museum. Let's listen to the rest of Edgar Ewald's story from last week about working for the telephone company here in Detroit Lakes. We added uh, so many operators in this business here that uh, they, they didn't have any room. Couldn't put any more switchboards in there. They had them stuffed, you might say, in there. Uh, in this time frame, the telephone company found out and through Bell Labs and uh, some other companies, they found out that on a pair of wires, uh, you could put some, uh, basically what it was, was radio. You could put radio on that, those wires so you could get more people talking on that same pair of wires than you could before. So then they, in order to do that and not have to add some more long distance equipment, they had to put some carriers in there. But then they could stack those from the floor to the ceiling. So that didn't take up quite so much room, but it took up a little more room. Then they needed more help to sell telephones. We needed more help to repair telephones, to install them, what have you. So they decided then they needed a big building. So then they built this big building, which is on the corner of Summit Avenue and Front Street. And then they moved uh, all the operators in a transition type thing. They moved them over to Summit Avenue. And then uh, they installed our, our what they call step-by-step -step equipment, which is uh, more automatic. Uh, you can dial your own numbers without having to go through the operator. And they were in this thing, so basically when they moved, they totally figured out they really didn't need all the operators. But then the operator still had to handle all the long distance calls. And then also basically in that time frame, uh, when you couldn't find a, somebody's telephone number, maybe you had poor eyesight or maybe you were looking in the wrong place, uh, you could call the operator and ask her, uh, what's the telephone number for Joe Blow or Mike or whatever. And then the operator would, in turn, give you the number. Well, they finally got into this step-by-step -step mechanism operation where you could call all by yourself, your neighbors and whoever was more or less in the Detroit Lake section of the of a telephone book. And then uh, they wound up with adding more telephone lines again and more people and uh, they added more cabins along the lakes. So a lot of these people wanted to have phone service. So you added them to this list. And because it was working so good, uh, a lot of people that didn't have them before kind of, oh, it'd be nice to have that. And so uh, they had telephone service, but that was seasonal. So then they wound up with all those extra people, they wound up, they needed more operators again. So then they added to the switchboard in the new building to, for more operators. Then they finally got into um, a different technology that uh, the people on a private line and two-party line could call direct long-distance calls. They didn't have to go through an operator in this year. And that was because they, we added more equipment in the central office that would identify these people by their telephone number. In, the, in all these transactions, I don't know if people really understand the thing, but the telephone company was not the sole ruler of everything we did because we were, we were totally governed by the federal government and by the state government. <clears throat> and the state mandated different things out here that had to be done. Uh, otherwise, uh, when we asked to get a little more money per month, 
from our customers in this year, uh, they could decide whether we got it or not. So we had to kind of participate with what they wanted done. Like, uh, okay, Detroit Lakes, we're uh, not just Becker County, we're only a little portion of the county where we can be. And beyond that, uh, somebody else can be in that area. Because uh, like, uh, just for instance here, Detroit Lakes, uh, we only could, we could go up here on this side of Westbury, was as far north as we could go from Detroit Lakes. There were people that were out in the west of Westbury there and in that territory, and that belonged to basically Audubon Telephone Company. Audubon didn't want to build to them because that was a long ways from Audubon and they weren't that big a telephone company. So the state says, these people all want telephone service, you give it to them. And there was no question of, you know, well, we can't afford it either. But that isn't, wasn't the question, you do it. So we had to go out there and build into that area and put all that telephone service in. After a while, Audubon got bigger. Somebody bought the right to have Audubon. And then they said, we want those people because they're in our territory and you're serving them. And we had to give them all up. And then we had to do whatever telephone plant we had out there, if we had set poles and what have you, if they wanted us to remove them, we had to remove them. And if they wanted to use the wire, we had to let them use the wire. When this uh, monopoly thing got settled and <coughs> AT&T had to more or less give up uh, all the bell systems in the whole United States, uh, Northwestern Bell, uh, which was basically a seven state area of the telephone system and that's what became U.S. West. That's what, that was what this is, see? <coughs> then U.S. West after a while went to Quest. The telephone company here now is uh, CenturyLink. That's all the time we have for Museum Roadshow. Thanks for joining us and please come back again for a new and exciting history topic next week. Thank you.